In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make a backpack for UGC in Roblox. This could be a backpack even if it's not for UGC. Even if it's for your Roblox game, this will do. I hope you find this video helpful. As always, if you do find it helpful, please hit the like button. It really helps the video out. And also subscribe for more Blender tutorials. Anything you want another tutorial on, comment down below. And let's get right to it. So you want to start here. So you can have Blender open, but we want to go to Roblox Studio. So what you want to do now is you want to go to the Avatar tab and then go to Rig Builder. And then there should be a bunch of options. I'm going to choose block rig because I just like using the block rigs for this. And yeah, you, you don't have to delete the spawn location, but I'm going to. Make sure you have the dummy selected. Go to the uh, the properties and then type in the position 0, 3, 0. And this will basically just move your dummy right to the middle, which will help you a lot in Blender. Now go into the workspace and right click on your dummy and then click export selection. And now you can save that in your files wherever you want. Just remember where it is. Now we're going to go to Blender and then go to File, Import, Wavefront, OBJ. And now locate where your dummy is saved. So you can see mine is right here. Double click on in the OBJ. Don't do the MTL. Make sure it's the OBJ and it should be imported. I actually got my dummy right here. If you want your blender to kind of like look like mine, where you can see the texture and stuff, just copy my settings. If you're on solid mode, click this little down arrow and just copy my viewport shading settings. Go to flat, the color mode to texture, turn on shadow and cavity, change the type to both, and then just copy these settings. Pretty simple. And now to get started with the actual modeling. So we're gonna start by doing shift A to add a mesh, and we are going to add a cube. Also, to move around, just press down your scroll wheel. So you can press down your scroll wheel to like move around like this. And you can scroll forwards and backwards to kind of like zoom in and out. And then also what we're going to do is we're going to now go into the side view. To go into the side view, you can either press um, these little letters on here. So these are all the different axis things. So you can go X, Y, X minus, Y minus, Z, or Z minus. And these just allow you to go side on. You can also shortcut these by doing one three or seven on your number pad as a quick of a short bit of short thing so we're going to do three on our number pad right here to go into the side view and the way i'm kind of like moving around is by doing shift and scroll wheel down at the same time to kind of pan around now what we're going to do is we're going to press g to move this cube kind of like to sit on the back where a backpack would now we're going to go and tab into edit mode z to go to wireframe or you can click on the little wireframe icon up here so you can go between material and wireframe mode or by using z and we're going to use the box select mode here so make sure you're on box select mode and drag a box over these kind of like um vertices at the back and i'll do g and then y to kind of like move it we're going to move it to around here which is about the same width as the torso you can change this depending on how you want it. However, I would recommend changing it when we're done. So now what we want to do is go out of edit mode with tab. Also go into solid mode, so we're not in wireframe. And we're going to go on our keyboard and do control 2. What this does is it adds a modifier here called subdivision surface. And the number you type, like so we did control 2, changes the level's viewport. So you can do control 1 for like a less detailed one. Control 2, control 3, control 4. We're going to do 2. 2 is perfect. We are going to have to go through and manually optimize this after. However, that's not too hard. Now, as you see, this thing is kind of just like a floating circle. However, we can fix this. Basically, what subdivision surface does is it takes all the vertices and stuff, and it'll basically just round every edge loads and add more vertices, which is really good for getting some more complex shapes. This is called sub D modeling. So you'll see here, if I like move these two vertices, it moves the whole shape out. But what we're going to do here is we're going to do control R to add a loop cut. As you see with control R, wherever you hover over, it kind of comes up with this yellow glowing line. And wherever you want this line to be, make sure your mouse is in the right position. So we want a loop here going down the middle. So when you've got the yellow line hovering over down the middle, left click once. When you left click, you'll see here it adds this loop and you can kind of like slide it along. And when you're sliding it along, you want to move it not all the way back, but almost all the way back, somewhere around here. And then left click. Left click will basically confirm this. And as you see, what this does is it starts to come together with that shape we're going to go for because you kind of got more vertices back here. The rounding doesn't affect this area as much. We're now going to do the same on the side here. We're going to do control R and then scroll up left click and then if you want these things to be central you can just right click so instead of left clicking right click and basically that will just make them central now we're going to select these two loops so the way i did that was i pressed alt and clicked on this line and it'll select the whole whole ring and we do the same again shift alt and click and as you see we've got them selected now we're going to do s to scale and x to scale on the x-axis to give it um to like go wider a bit with them 
And we're also going to go and use the box select mode again. Drag them over here. And then do G and Z to kind of like move them up. We're now going to go and press the little Y icon here so we can get into back view. And then we're going to go Z to go to wireframe. And then we're going to highlight all over all of these vertices. Go out of wireframe. And we're now going to just do S and X to kind of like give that top the pointier look that a backpack has. I'm going to also go and do G and Z to move these things down a bit. And as you see, we're going to start to get a cool shape. I also want to have a little bit more like curviness to this. So we add another loop cut somewhere around here. And then I'm going to do S and X to kind of like scale it out. And now I'm going to go and select these two vertices going to side mode here and kind of like start to just bump it out a bit. This bit is almost getting to the point where you just need to like mess around with stuff yourself and try and create that backpack look. Depends on the backpack you're going for. You might want more of a boxy backpack. You might want a walking bag with like loads of stuff strapped to it. You might want like more of an old satchel kind of look i'm just gonna be doing like a classic backpack here and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shade this smooth so we go into edit mode do a face shade smooth a basically selects everything and now that everything's selected it shades everything smooth and shade smooth does work when using sub d sub d modeling we're now going to go over to object data properties this little green triangle and then go over to normals auto smooth ticket i like changing the number to 50 50 i found to be the best number for the kind of like low poly modeling if you're not trying to get those hard edges still so what we're going to do now is we want to add some more detail. The top of a backpack usually has like a strap. Well, not a strap, but kind of like a flap over the top. So what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate this part that we've got here. We're going to do Shift D. So Shift D will duplicate it like this. And then right click. It has duplicated. However, you'll see it's actually inside. They're, they're literally on top of each other. So if I press G right now, you'll see it does move. So if I do Control Z to undo... And what we're going to do is we're going to do go over here to the subdivision surface modifier and then click the little down arrow and apply. You'll see here up in the top we have cube and cube one. Cube one should be your duplicated backpack. So if you hide it, you should still see we have the one without the subdivision surface applied. You want to hide this one and give this new one we've just applied the modifier on. You want to use this. And as you'll see here, we actually have like in edit mode, we can see all of these different edges. Whereas when you use subdivision surface mode, it's purely just a preview. And when you're in edit mode, you just see what you've got. So we're going to go here and we want to basically make, make our lid. Well, not lid, it's like a, a flap on the backpack. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use C selection to basically draw on what we want to keep. So I'm going to draw, you can scroll to make this brush bigger and smaller. And you want it to be something like this at the top. So if I just make sure I have all of this selected, something like this. And then we'll also select these ones in line with it too. We'll probably be adjusting this a bit after anyway. You know, I'll select these as well. I think the more should be better. And now we're going to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to do Control and I on our keyboard. And this will basically select everything we didn't have selected. And then we're going to go Delete Faces. And now we can unhide this cube here. And you'll see that we have the backpack back. And we're going to go back into edit mode on this duplicated part. And then we're going to press everything. Select everything by pressing A. And then E to extrude. And this is kind of like extrude what we've just selected out. And as you'll see, we've kind of got this nice strap on the top. It's not a strap, it's kind of like a flap. You add more detail here. So as you can see, I am now in edge mode. And I'm going to select these two edges here. And I'm going to try and bevel them. So if I bevel these, you'll see it kind of doesn't look too bad. There you see that. It's not, it's not awful. And the same way we actually did this top bit, we can do stuff like pockets. So if I go and duplicate this part again, this main cube part, and then right click, hide the original cube, apply the subdivision surface modifier, and then just select the faces. So you want to go to face select mode here, and then face select what we want the pocket to be. So if we want the pocket to be something like this, you know, I'll select some more. So got that. And then do Control i delete faces unhide that cube and then do extrude and we can again go to edge mode and then select all the corners and from these corners we can go and bevel them if we go here and do Control b you'll see we've got like a nice bevel here to the pocket and again this is a very simple backpack however this will show you the basics of how to make a backpack now we're going to make the straps that come over the shoulders so this is really easy we're literally going to go shift a add mesh and add a plane and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into side view again using three on our keyboard go up just use g to move and go somewhere around here and then tab to enter edit mode wireframe make sure you're in vertices select mode and then grab these vertices here with the box select tool 
We're now going to go and do G to move these vertices somewhere around here in the backpack, just so that they're on the inside. Then we're going to select these vertices, move them to just over the shoulders here, then do E to extrude this selection to go down to the bottom here. E again, and then make these ones kind of go on the inside of the backpack here. Now, what we are going to do, this is we're going to do A to select all of the vertices, do S to scale and X to scale on the X axis. If we do G and X and move this on one of the sides to kind of like in line with where we want it, we can now go into the modifiers tab and add a mirror modifier. And this should actually mirror it over. As you see right now, this isn't perfect. We are going to be adjusting it. So we go back into edit mode on these straps. We can do control R like here and then go G and Z to move it up. This will just start, you'll be able to get some more shape to it. And also these straps do need to actually go into the backpack. You can like move these along individually, something like this, and basically do it with both of them and strap them up into the actual backpack. We do control R again here, and we are going to basically just keep moving these just so that there's no clipping, you don't want any clipping. So we're going to keep going you can move them around and of course again you could do what we did before with subdivision surface you could do control one and kind of like get this more curvy look to it so you want to go something like that and you have to of course move them some more because of how subdivision surface works however it shouldn't look all that bad um as you see here actually looks pretty good and we're gonna have to finish down here fixing up all these so um, you have to add a loop cut down here and honestly there's not really a way you can stop clipping through the torso here and then for the bottom you can very simply just stick these up in there that is good i'd say you can hide the dummy if you want by clicking the eye and this is you can see your backpack we're going to shade smooth this strap face shade smooth and you can also add another modifier here if you add a solidify modifier you'll see you can actually add some more thickness to it so if we add some thickness something like think that's good and now we're also going to go to object data properties like we did before i'm going to type 50 in here and enable auto smooth and as you see here you'll actually have like a cool backpack yeah not too bad and if we enable the w again you see it fits and honestly i don't really have much time left in this video to show you guys how to texture this so if you want to know how to texture this click on the video on screen now to learn how to texture ugc items simply with a gradient palette i really hope you find this useful that video will allow you to texture it add some color to your ugc item and it should be good so head over there texture your ugc item comment down below any questions and hopefully i see you in the next video